uh, welcome. Welcome all. And I hope you uh, will have a very good time tonight. Uh, tonight we have uh, William or Bill G uh, as our guest speaker tonight. Uh, we have uh, some information about Bill that uh, is rather funny, but that's beside the point. Now the internet says that Sir William G was born in 1595 and died in uh, 1657, both in Yorkshire, England. A bill comes to us back from the dead then to present he's, his workshop. He's actually, he, that's actually my great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> no kidding. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir William. Sir William comes from a long line of those who like to keep their last names private. Imagine that. <laughs> Cardi B, Kenny G, Maggie Q, Bill W, Jay Z, and Mr. T. But anyway, all kidding aside, Bill has been uh, an energy healer for over 20 years and a Kashik dowser since 2003. Uh, Bill is a Reiki master and a teacher. He's a co owner and co founder of Vital Bioenergetics along with his spouse, Nina. He has authored four books some of which are available from the bookstore and is the co-creator of the Time Temple Charts and is working on a set of dowsing charts called the Ascension Charts. He's certified in and has written a book on spiritual response therapy, uh, a method to clear stuck energies related to career, relationships, and connections to source. True connection, joy, and abundance can only, be co can only come from our connection to the source. Many of us unknowingly embrace grief, loneliness, scarcity, pain, and attachment. Bill uses two types of dowsing to help you clear blocks to better relationships, career prosperity, and abundance. Health, freedom from energetic attachments and achieving peace with end of life issues. Um, he goes by three basic tenets, release your mind, treat your body, and listen to your soul. Bill and Nina offer private sessions, present, present workshops, and have three-day intensive on the Time Temple. Uh, Bill has a Bachelor of Arts from Ryder University and an MBA from University of Phoenix. Bill lives in Rutland, Vermont. With his knowledge of accounting and business, he offers classes and consulting on taxes and small business issues, especially focused on healing and energy, uh, energy uh, practitioners in addition to his uh, healing work. Uh, a little bit later, I will put a document up on the chat that you can download, which has all of Bill's information on it. Um, in, his, in this workshop this evening, Bill will describe how to increase awareness of the synchronicities that happen every day, but may be just outside of our perceptions due to our attachment to low vibration emotions, which have us looping our karma, preventing us from living our best lives. And so without any further talking, I'm just gonna give hand it over to Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tick. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, thanks for giving it to me. This, to All right. <laughs> well, you you read it more wonderfully, you, and, you, and you did a little, you went above and beyond. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. <clears throat> very, very thrilled to be uh, talking to you on this subject today. Uh, the the subject that we're going to be talking about. The the title of the talk is attracting synchronicities and letting go of emotional attachments. And I have a PowerPoint that goes along with this. And so I'll just pull that up. So that way we can take a look at that. So we're gonna do a present, extend the presentation. Okay, so here we are attracting synchronicities, breaking the cycle of emotional attachments. Uh, I am, Bill G. And uh, uh, Tick did a great job of introducing me. Uh, like I said, an energy healer for over 20 years, Reiki master teacher, certified SRT consultant, 
developed the time temple charts and currently working on a set of charts called the ascension charts and um, uh, i've been a speaker with the uh the uh, asd national convention for three years in a row and hope to be there next year too so uh looking forward to that so a little word quick on what it, what is the, what are the tools that I primarily use? The tools that I use is the SRT and uh, time temple charts. The SRT charts were developed by Robert Detzler. Um, these back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Robert passed away in 2013. So what you see is what you get now is with the um, with the uh, time with the SRT charts. Um, they are taught by certified uh, teachers through the um, Spiritual Response Association. And then we have the time temple charts. The time temple charts Nina and I developed last year, and uh, we found them to be excellent at creating a coordinate. And uh, what we're looking for here is to change your timeline. So we do that by locating a coordinate within space time. Then we find the anchoring coordinate within space time, and then we bring in awareness into your conscious mind. What the heck is going on in my life? And then we clear it. And not only do, do the time temple charts clear it from our Akashic record, but we are also able to provide you with instruction. What do I need to do? in order to help bring my vibration up to a higher level. Because the bottom line is, my job is not just to help you um, raise, help you deal with your uh, career issues, not just help you deal with your relationship issues. It is to help you raise your vibration because ascension is happening, whether we want it to or not. We are all rising to a higher vibration, and we need to be ready for this. And the way we get ready for this is by releasing our karma, releasing our programs, releasing our blocks, and embracing love, light, and uh, understanding what it is to be a fourth dimensional being in a changing world. So what are synchronicities? Synchronicities are moments within our vibrational perception to bring greater creativity and joy in our lives. So what do I mean by that? Every day, every four seconds, we are presented with moments that will either raise our vibration or lower our vibration. What we want to do is we want to raise our awareness so that way we can be more aware of those moments that will raise our vibration and clear away those attachments, those emotional things that are, that are causing us to constantly loop our dramas, to constantly loop our low vibration all the time. So when you are fi a finely tuned instrument, to these high level synchronicity events or what we call neutral events that happen in our lives, then we can bring in those moments and raise our vibration. A wonderful case in point here. Um, two weekends ago, I had my first um, ayahuasca experience in a, um, in a uh, sanctuary in New Hampshire. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And it was I did this with the intention of further raising my vibration. The interesting thing about this is how I came across that particular place was through a series of synchronicities and neutral events. I set out an intention. I want to the universe. I didn't even know this place existed. I set out an intention. I want to have a more visceral experience. I wanted to have a like a ayahuasca experience, but I, I heard of ayahuasca and whatever. And I was like, well, you know, I don't want to travel. I can't travel all the way to the other side of the country, or I can't go to Costa Rica or Peru or whatever. And I figured that's where you did it. You know, I didn't think you can do this in the United States. So a friend of ours 
went to an event down in or went to a place that did this down in Florida. And she came back and she told us how what a wonderful experience it was. And I was like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. I, you know, I wonder if there's anywhere closer. And so we we Google it and there it is. I'm like, okay, there's my neutral event. That's my synchronicity. Sign up. Sign up right, right on the spot. I signed up for that because I knew that if by not signing up, then I would have missed that neutral event, that synchronicity. And out of that, I got a wonderful experience. I met some wonderful people, got some new clients out of it. It was exactly the right experience that I needed to have to raise my vibration and to continue on the spiritual path that I'm on. That's what we're talking about. That's what the work that I do is to bring into our awareness. So how do we do that? Perception of synchronicity, we do this via the visible light spectrum because the visible light spectrum operates with a frequency, with a vibration. <clears throat> it governs what we see as opportunities and it also governs what we don't see. For, so we look at the visible light spectrum, what I call the color of time, okay? The color of time here is we've got, in the red spectrum, we have our red to yellow, we have our high vibration, our highest, most illuminated path. In the lemon to turquoise, we have our often repeated or normal predictable. In the blue and the violet, we got the low vibration or our karma laden path. So just to talk a little bit more about this, if you see here the way that the um, the, uh, the 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 scribbles here are here, that you see the thickest part of this is within that yellow to green, that lemon to green to turquoise area because this is the area of our highest awareness. This is what we're constantly seeing in our life. I mean, it's no coincidence that when you look out your window that everything's so green or yellow or whatever, it's because those are the most prominent um, colors within our visual light spectrum. The reds, the blues, the purples, not so much. So. What we want is we want to bring in more of those red moments because those are your higher vibration moments. And we want to clear away our indigo violet blue ones because those are the ones that sit in the background. Those are the colors that of the those uh, events that have occurred in your past lives or the, those are the colors of your trauma. So we need to be not only aware of the ones that are in that lower light spectrum, we also need to be able to clear them. A better illustration here is to view time as a four second interval. And time is visually represented as a tesseract. A tesseract is a fourth dimensional cube. So if you think about it this way, a, a cube is to a square is a tesseract to a cube. Okay, so if we think of a tesseract as a more a multi-dimensional cube, that's what a tesseract is. So the left image, this is how most of us experience each moment in our life. Each emotion and action follows a predictable pattern while our emotional attachment to karmic patterns governs how we perceive each moment, while our highest, most creative life moments, which are in that red zone, that 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 red spectrum right over there is outside of our perception. So this is how we go along life. We are repeating patterns over and over again. And in the background is our karma. This is the stuff that we've accumulated. This is, this is our trauma. This is our trauma, not only in this life and every lifetime we've ever lived because time, all of time exists in a four second interval, okay? So the right image is what we want. In the right image, we are clearing these emotional attachments up here. So that way we create the opportunity for this, these red and pink wonderful moments to then 
present them, become our new pattern, our new life experience. And we clear out those other things that are getting in the way. So emotional, now we talk about emotional attachments. Emotional attachments are those things that are in that turquoise to blue range. They are constructs within 3D reality that is connected to that low vibration energy. They are part of an illusion of separation that keeps us away from the reconnection with source. So in other words, um, when we have emotional attachments, when we are feeling low or we are feeling fearful, we are um, no longer connected to those high vibrational moments. And it's a construct. It is something we need to identify and get rid of in order to have a higher life experience. It's part of an illusion because we are all one. We are all separate. We are not just a mind, the, um, the mind body complex that we believe that we are is a part of the illusion of separation because we are actually a social memory complex. We are all connected. And again, part of the work that we do here is to remind your consciousness that you are actually part of a collective consciousness and that we can all learn from each other and we are all connected through the bonds of love. So specifically emotional attachments. They are connected to our karma through past lives. That's, that's also, that's the first major thing that we have to be aware of. It attracts dramas. So when you have an emotional attachment, you tend to attract more of the same. If you have an emotional, a karma of having bad relationships, you get rid of one relationship and then all of a sudden you're in another relationship and you're repeating the same thing all over again. That's because we you didn't clear out the karma in the first place that created the situ created the circumstances the neutral events or the synchronicities that created that bad relationship in the first place. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to let that go because we want to no longer attract that drama that prevents us from reaching our fullest potential. It lowers our energetic vibration, making us more susceptible to illness because when your mind-body connection is out of balance, it does lead to disease. It places us in a position of victimhood where things happen to us rather than helping us make things happen. Uh, last night, my son was asking me because he was, he was feeling a little ill. And he's like, Daddy, you gave me your cold, or that head cold that you had. I know you gave it to me. And so I was like, all right. All right. So I'm, not, I'm going to ignore that for a moment. And we're going we're gonna to break out the pendulum here and we're going to douse it. We're going to find out what's happening here. And it turned out that it wasn't me at all. It was him. It was his vibration. He's 13 years old. He's going through a growth spurt. Stuff's happening. And he's having some emotional stuff, which is typical for a, for a teenager. He's got emotional attachments. It lowered his vibration. It made him ill. So what we did was we cleared it. We, we came up with some strategies on how he could build himself back up again. And today he felt fine. So and the other thing that emotional attachments do is it disempowers our innate creative ability to shape reality to whatever form we want it to be. I've got this wonderful little magnet that I got from the, uh, from the um, Pachamama sanctuary. It's called Thoughts Become Things. And that is extremely true. That whatever we think of all day, if you monitor your thoughts, your positive and negative thoughts, whatever you think of most in the day is what your life actually manifests into. If you think positive thoughts all day, you have a positive life. If you think negative thoughts all day, you are manifesting negative energies. And those are the synchronicities and those neutral events that you're drawing in, which is, again, more of the same. So Akashic research and clearing breaks those emotional attachments. So how does it work? How we break emotional attachments with Akashic dowsing? First of all, we use, we use the charts to douse the emotional attachment block or drama to be cleared. 
And again, I have a variety of different charts that I use and I ask the uh, high self to find the right chart. And then once it finds the right chart, then, I, then we go into the specific protocols in each chart until we find what actually works. So step two is using the charts where you identify what needs to be brought in to replace that emotional attachment. So it's not just clearing out the drama, but we also need to replace it with a dharma or practice that is going to help build you up again. Step three, with high self, we bring bro both the attachment and the new life pattern into our conscious awareness. And then we apply that new awareness across your entire timeline. So we're not just talking about the day you're born to the most, this moment to every moment afterwards. We're also talking about every past life, every future life, every parallel life, everything that you're, the sum of your existence, we are clearing it and we are changing your history as if whatever trauma or block or drama or emotional attachment that we are clearing never ever happened. So I'm gonna walk you through a quick case study here of a, uh, of a client of mine. Now this is not an actual client. This is more like a uh, composite of several clients rolled into one person. So Gina. Gina is a mental health professional who's been married for 10 years to her husband, who is a building contractor. They have a five-year-old son. Uh, Gina feels that she hasn't been putting in enough time to either her son or her husband. And sometimes she often feels like a stranger in her own home. As a contractor, her husband is sometimes away from home for weeks at a time. And Gina works in a critical care unit at a mental hospital, which often involves late nights and few vacation days. Gina is looking into starting up a private practice so that she can spend more time at home, but she's not sure if that's the right move in her career right now. So she sets up an appointment with me so she can find ways to break that current cycle so that she can find more joy and harmony in her relationships with both her husband and her son. So our next step here is then we're going to go into our dowsing research. So in this particular case, the ascension cards came, the ascension charts came up, in particular a past life connection. And in this past life connection, she was a female, a mother, she was poor, and she lived during the Industrial Revolution in on the European continent. And that's really all we need as far as setting a coordinate. Again, we're only looking for a coordinate in space-time. So with this past life research protocol of the Ascension charts, we discover that Gina's current emotional attachment is connected to a past life as a poor European mother during the Industrial Revolution. In her particular family, and again, the, these details can uh, then come up within, a, um, within automatic writing. So what we'll do is we'll douse it, and then what I'll do is I'll just tune in, and then I'll just start typing like, like a madman and then the, the, the story comes out. So in her particular family, everyone had to work, which meant that from the time her children were over the age of five, she rarely got to see them as she was forced to work from sun up to sun down six days a week. This created, uh, this has created an industrious paradigm in Gina, but it also is reminding her of the sorrow and detachment that she had from her own children, whom she never got to know in that lifetime. She is repeating this pattern in her current life by working a very demanding job and leaving her son to be raised by people she doesn't really know. We do more dowsing research. And again, we're going into the ascension charts. The blocking construct here are negative energy influences. And we also have a major female archetype, which is Demeter, the nurturer. So further dowsing reveals two major constructs that are causing issues with Gina's state of mind. The first are negative energy influences, which are thought forms and energies that place us in a state of fear so that we cannot find positive solutions to life pro life's problems. The second is the female archetype of the nurturer, which is a motherly figure who will do anything to protect and nurture her offspring or those who are in her care. 
This archetype can be seen as a karmic means of making up for the past life and the previous dowsing, and it could also explain why she chose to be a mental health professional. Unfortunately, these constructs are out of balance because in her effort to balance her karma from her prior life, what she's actually doing is creating new karma with her son who needs her right now in this lifetime. So summary of the emotional attachments. Her attachment is guilt due to a past life karma. This leads to an attachment to negative energy influences where feelings of self-worth and playing out her karma becomes a narrow life focus that generates more karma in this lifetime. Gina's lack of work-life balance is a combination of low self-worth, a desire to fix the errors from past life mistakes by choosing a profession focused on helping people in extreme need. This expression of her nurturer archetype neglects the one person whom she should be the nurturer to, which is her own son. So where do we go from here? We ask high self for the clearing. And for this, we bring into conscious awareness of the past life trauma. And then we ask that that karma be cleared from the Akashic record. We then bring into conscious awareness the limiting constructs and beliefs of this lifetime. And then we ask that that be cleared from the Akashic record. We draw in the desire to be a better mother and better nurturer to her family. And then we apply that desire into the present lifetime and all lifetimes that came before and all lifetimes that follow. What next? Now the real work, now the real work begins. Because again, as a Akashic Dowser spiritual counselor, I am just the facilitator. The rest of it is up to her. What needs to change? Does opening her own practice so she can spend more time at home now make more sense? In what ways can she grow? Can, what can ways can Gina explore? Where can she, she can be a better nurturer to her son? And you notice here that we, the nurturer is extremely important here. So now we have a direction. We know that she needs to be a better nurturer and which is why she chose to be a mental health professional. But now she needs to learn how to balance that. So what can she do differently than what she experienced in those prior lifetimes? Does she do what she did before, which is, throw herself into her work while neglecting her home life? Or does she neglect her professional life just so, so that she can concentrate at home? And the answer is neither of those. It needs to be a balance. So how, where do we go from here? So in follow-up sessions, now that we have an idea of her new life direction, in our next few sessions, we are exploring and fine-tuning the various steps that she needs to take to get there. We may also need to do further research and clearing when it comes to issues with her husband, potential business partners, blocks to abundance, or what other, whatever other subconscious blocks that may be getting in the way of living her best life. And Gina here is actually what I would call a typical client of mine. So when we start, we start off with. Um, what can be, you know, a, a, a simple, what they think is a simple problem, what you think is a simple problem. But then we discover it is actually not a simple problem. It is a life change that you, that needs to be made in order to raise your vibration to live your best life. Because if you're living a life right now that you think is eh, meh or not so good, what the universe is telling you and because you are here right now seeing this presentation, this is your synchronicity. This is your neutral event. This is your red zone saying, hey, maybe I should give this guy a try. So how do we do that? You go onto my website, vitalbioenergics.com slash book online. And then you can, there you can schedule a free 30-minute consultation or book your first session with me. We also have a free weekly podcast called High Vibes. And I also have a YouTube channel under my name, William G. So if you, if you don't, uh, you don't want to book sessions with me, but you want to benefit from the, uh, the free content that we have, that's fantastic. High Vibes is available on iTunes. Uh, actually, no, it's not on iTunes. It's on um, Spotify. It's on iHeartRadio. It's on uh, 
a number of different platforms. It's also on Podbean, and you can also get to it directly from the website. Uh, you can also help support Vital Bioenergetics and receive valuable coupons, inside information, giveaways by becoming a Patreon, because we do have a Patreon page as well, which is patreon.com slash vital bioenergetics. So time for questions. Um, I have really, really enjoyed uh, giving this presentation right now, and um, I hope you have lots of, uh, lots of great questions for me. So the way we're going to work it, I think, is um, uh, Tick is going to read the questions and then I'll answer. Right. And then just to get the pride to pump here a little bit. Um, how did you arrive at the figure four seconds for the synchronicities? Ah, four seconds. Four seconds is actually um, a an average uh, based on Planck's theorem, actually. Uh, so it's a combination of Newton and Planck uh, that came up with that four second interval. Interesting, interesting. Thank you, thank you. Um, oh, Terry said something that he surprised me. He thought the, uh, uh, the, the red shades of your tesseract uh, would Ooh, be- that's a great question, actually. <laughs> oh, get there. Okay, go ahead. That is a great question. Um, the red shades. Yes, they do have to do with the root chakra, but actually what we're looking at here is a mirror image. <clears throat> the, according to uh, Chinese cosmology, the, um, you got your indigo through red on the front, and then you have your, then it reverses from the back where your red is at the top and your indigo is at the bottom so from the rear the um the colors are actually inverted and so and why is this important because that is our relationship with time our relationship with others is in the chakras and the colors of the chakras and i work with that too in within the uh, time temple charts and whatever we are also working with the chakras and yes root chakra is red crown chakra is indigo or, or violet but then we need to reverse that when we are dealing with our relationship with time. Interesting. Um, Lynn asks, what happens when a trauma that was created, that has created positive aspects of your personality gets, uh, gets cleared? <laughs> well, that's great. But again, <clears throat> this is, this is a, that's actually a really, really good question too. And I got to have actually a good example of that. Um, when I first decided three years ago to do this job professionally, I, I asked the universe, hey, I really want to do this professionally um, because I was 15 years in the corporate world. <laughs> you know, I was, a, I was an accounting professional um, and I absolutely did not like my job at all because I found it boring and I also wanted to do this work. I really wanted to do this vibrational work, but I was scared. I was, you know, I didn't want to lose the paycheck. <laughs> the chip paycheck was, I was addicted to the money. And I was like, okay, universe, just make it happen. And I got laid off. <laughs> universe <laughs> came through, which is great. But the, nice. <laughs> but the event itself, the event of actually getting laid off, that's traumatic. That's causing trauma. So there are better ways to experience high vibration life. So yes, your traumas do produce positive results sometimes. Sometimes they cause loops. But when you learn from your mistakes and where you learn from your traumas, yes, you grow as a result. But wouldn't it be great if you can grow without the trauma? And that's where, we're, that's where we wanna be. So that way you are aware of those neutral events and synchronicities that are coming into your awareness and say, oh, wait a second, I see that coming. I choose not to step in front of the bus. <laughs> I choose to simply learn the lesson without the trauma and also experience the higher vibration me. Uh, because you're, you are absolutely correct. And if you don't do this, and that's the other thing too that people don't realize, if you are given clear instruction 
from high self or you from spirit that you need to do X, Y, and Z in order for you to do your thing. Because some, in one of my, the charts that I have, we have specific dharma, specific meditations, specific chakras you need to be working on. If you say, oh, that's very nice. That's, thank you very much. I'm very entertained. I'll just go along my own way now. Mm -hmm. The universe will drop a piano on your head and there's your trauma. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, I guess I should have listened to that. Well, wouldn't it be nice not to have the piano drop on your head? Because I've had a number of pianos drop on my head and that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, we, we have we have two things here about the time temple charts yep. and uh, are they for sale? And, and uh, can you tell us a little bit more, more about that? But you mentioned something that you and I were talking about at the beginning. You just said loops. Yes. And, Looping uh, dramas. Yes. I wasn't sure what what the, if the people who are a, a looping drama or a loop a looping timeline is something that happens over and over and over again. So if you find yourself, for example, in the same failed relationships, or you're at the same dead end job, or you are, or it, it could even be an emotion that you're constantly feeling frustrated or you're constantly feeling unfulfilled. That could be a loop. And loops are fueled by karma, and they are also fueled by a very narrow vision of your, of your, um, uh, of your time space movement through, through life. We expand your vision, you become aware of those loops, and then you can say, oh, that's a loop, I'm not going to do that anymore. I choose instead to have a, a higher life existence. The question regarding the time temple charts. Yes, they are for sale. However, they are available only through uh, signing up for my three-day intensive. Reason for that, I, and, and don't everybody jump on me on this one, because first of all, the time temple charts are, um, they're very, they're complicated. <laughs> they require, you know, th these are the time temple charts. They are, they do require some training. The textbook does provide some of that training. However, um, the I've done this the uh, three day intensive uh, one time already, and the feedback I got from the people who were in that class is that they found the instruction to be very very helpful because you don't use them the same way as you would do a a Brian Olson set of charts because you can. Basically, uh, Brian Olson is a is a, an Akashic dowser with a, with a gazillion charts. He's got volumes and volumes of charts, and you don't need a whole lot of training. As long as you know how to use a pendulum, you can usually you can figure out how to use them on your own. These charts require a little more training because we you need to really understand how the tesseract works. You need to understand how the the time looping works, and also it's very heavily steeped in Chinese cosmology. Uh, chakras, the law of one. And so we go into a lot of that stuff in order to give you a complete picture of what that is. I do have a class coming up in January, January 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Uh, the, the tuition for the class is $600 and, it's a, and you get 15 hours of uh, direct instruction with that. Plus you get a set of charts. You, you get the, the, nice, the nice professionally printed ones. And you also get a copy of a of the textbook, and the, the textbook is professionally bound. And you get a and you also get a um, a nice. Uh, a, a, I throw a pendulum in there too, to, for you know, if you, in case you don't have one. <clears throat> Lynn, Lynn asks, as a, as a follow up to your uh, question about trauma created by positive parts in, uh, yep. in, in your personality about children. Who haven't had a chance to uh, uh, recognize this? Yes. Well, children have past lives, and we all have past lives. Um, some have more past lives than others, and sometimes, I mean, I have done work with children before. Uh, not too often. I prefer working with adults than than children. Usually, when we're dealing with children, we're dealing with children who are under the uh, teenage age. Are usually playing out dramas or um, karma related directly to the parent. 
So, um, for example, I had a, a client that I was working with, and she was wondering why her eight-year-old daughter was acting out at school and whatever. And when we researched it, it was not really the daughter who was acting out. It was the mother's trauma that was being reflected back to her through the child. So by clearing the, dra the trauma or the, the, the karmic pattern with the mother, we were able to change the behavior of the child. So we weren't actually working directly with the child. We were working with the mother. Once a child, though, gets past the age of 14, 15 years old, they're on their own at that point, because at that point, the, their um, Akashic record becomes more readily available. They are now playing out their, 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 um, their life purpose, or at least their past life karma is starting to really start to play in here, and their overall life purpose is starting to present itself. And then, yeah, I can do that work. Absolutely. Uh, do a child that is beaten is that do, yes parents come uh, i would have to, i would have to say yes that it, that a, a children who are abused by their parents the child chose to be with those parents in order to be that phase conjugate mirror for them in that lifetime and yeah a, an abused child is experiencing trauma no doubt about it and that is something that will need to be cleared later on once we are able to get past that trauma. But again, why is a child being abused? Because abusers were, were usually abused themselves. And that is stuff that needs to be cleared on their side of it. Now, are they ready to be cleared? That's something else to be, that's, that's debatable in and of itself. Um, I have worked with clients who have severe childhood trauma i mean we're talking stuff that would that's horror movie worthy and in every case what we needed to do is we needed to understand the abuser's karma because the act of abuse to that child was playing out their own trauma so when i was working with the adult now of who was the abused child or the sexually abused child, we had to go back and figure out what, if through the charts, what was the abuser's motivation. And that way, once we understood that and were able to forgive that, then we were able to clear the trauma. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, we'll wait for her to answer, I, I suppose. Tell, okay. Uh, when when uh, when you start out with your with your uh, sessions, then it sounds like you go right to the past life. The sometimes, time. sometimes. Again, it does. I go into a session with a blank slate. You know, someone says, "Hey, I want to work on a relationship." Hey, that's great. Where are we and then and then once we we chat for a little bit and get an idea of what direction we're going in, then we're like, okay. Um, you know, high self, which chart are we going to? Are we going to pass lives? Maybe, maybe not. When I did the case study here, um, it went to pass lives. I didn't expect it to go to pass lives, but it did anyway. So that's what was presented. And that's where, that's where it went. Because when I prepared the presentation, I was like, okay, high self, give me a, a good example here of someone who the audience will connect with. <laughs> And that, there it was. Good, thank you. Um, another question I had that that you uh, you mentioned, uh, you said something about uh, clearing the akashic record. Yeah. Uh, on that, and is is that what you're doing, or are you just preventing it from going on? Or I'm actually clearing the akashic record because the akashic record is <clears throat> is that is that burden that we're all holding on to. If, we, we, if you imagine ascension as a balloon rising up, all of that karma, all of that stuff that is getting in the way are the weights that are holding that balloon down. So by clearing it, we are releasing it and allowing that, that uh, balloon to float uh, freely. And that's 
that's 4D. That is ex consciousness expansion. And the great thing is that the Akashic record is a soul social memory complex. We all share the same Akashic record. So by clearing the Akashic record for one, we are correct. We are clearing the Akashic record for all. Well, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see now. Do we need to know how to do SRT in order to use the time temple charts? Um, no. No, that's the, the, the short answer to that question is no. <laughs> we do not need, you do not need to know the SRT charts. You don't need to have a background at Akashic dowsing. Again, we will, um, that, that instruction is provided for you. And again, I, I throw a pendulum in there in case you don't even have a pendulum. <clears throat> so, so then you'd, you'd, uh, and that's, that's in your intensive. In yeah, that's in the three day intensive. Um, I also have other classes available through my website. Uh, I have a protocol called discerning the, um, not, it's not discerning the time temple. It's the um, the twin flame within restructuring, which is more focused on relationships. That protocol is available as a downloadable class in through my website. So you can actually get those charts and um, view. I have a like four or five hours worth of video that goes along with that that you can do as well. If, in case you don't want to do the three day intensive or you and you just want to try this. With one of my protocols, the um, uh, the the twin flame within restructuring is available. Um, there's, there's a kind of a dearth of uh, questions here, so I'm just going to keep asking. Oh, excellent! Tell tell me about your books. My books, yes, I have um, three books that are available on Amazon right now. Uh, the first one and is also called... at the bookstore. And at the bookstore, and at the bookstore, yep. Bookstore. Although the bookstore has, doesn't have my volume two yet. I still have to, I was going to give those to you at the convention and that didn't happen. So, <laughs> um, so it's Conscious Conduit, A User's Guide to Ascension and Spirit Path Book of Days, volume one and volume two. Uh, Conscious Conduit and um, uh, Spirit Path Book of Days, volume one are available in the bookstore. They are also available as audio, as audio books. And the uh, Spirit Path Book of Days Volume 2 is available on Amazon. Um, the fourth book is the called Discerning the Time Temple, which is a book that I co-wrote with Nina, and that you get when you uh, sign up for the class. Okay. Well, it sounds like you've got quite an interesting uh, process going on here. Yeah. And well, it's... Uh, let, we're in the process of expanding the business and doing, um, doing, trying new different things, new and different things. Um, like I said, we just started off this um, weekly podcast. Uh, yes, the books are available through Audible. Yes, um, the um, like the podcast is uh, called High Vibes. Ascension is happening. It's uh, and again, the the whole premise of High Vibes is to help you be a fourth dimensional being in a changing world. And that's that's actually our tagline, help you be a fourth dimensional being in a changing world. And I have we have frequency upgrades on there. We talk about our work. We talk about the law of one. And uh, we are going to be soon taking on a, a new partner into Vital Bioenergetics and we'll be sharing her stuff as well. Would you, would you give me the high vibes uh, spelling and I'll put that up on the chat? Yes, it's um, high vibes. H I H H I H I G H H I G H. Yep. Vibes, as in vibrations. Yep. Okay, good. I'll put that. And up that's there. available on uh, Podbean, and it's also available on the YouTube channel. And uh, and I narr and I narrate the books. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good. Good. All right. Well, um, great. So uh, everybody, you get Bill G's contact information on the PDF that I've uploaded. Okay. Uh, if if you don't know, you can just go to his uh, web page um, and or look him up, and you can find mm -hmm. out about Sir William. Sir William. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, he was he was an advisor to Elizabeth the first. <laughs> really? He, he was he was he was a member of her court. <laughs> Interesting. It, it, very, very interesting. I said, geez, I don't know. He's either going to be flattered or upset that I bring this up. <laughs> no, no, there, there's a statue of him and everything in, in Yorkshire. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Well, there you go. Some place to go for your vacation. Yeah. yeah oh, I, would love to, I would love to check it out. <laughs> COVID's over. Okay, good. All right. Well, we're, we're coming up on the bewitching hour. Uh, what the books? Oh, the books again. Yes, the books. The books are, it's called Conscious Conduit, A User's Guide to Ascension. Uh, yeah, A User's Guide to Ascension, which is um, a book. Um, the the uh, Conscious Conduit is a useful book for using the pendulum in your everyday life. And the other part of the book is basically a business manual on if you're interested in doing it professionally. And it's primarily, but all three books are focused on spiritual response therapy because the um, when I wrote the books, I the time temple charts weren't invented yet, so that's what I was. That was my primary focus. All right. What was the other one? Uh, A Spirit book Path, Book of Days. Spirit Path, yep. Spirit Path, Book of Days, Volume One and Volume Two. And like I said, both uh, the the Conscious Conduit and, and Volume One are available at the ASD bookstore. And uh, all three are available on uh, YouTube. I'm the, sorry, available on Amazon, and the um, and the first two books are also available on Audible. Good. Good. All right. I guess that's it then. Well, thank you very much, Bill. I oh, really it was my pleasure. Really appreciate your efforts and. Uh, yeah. I hope everybody. Got, I I get a lot out of it. I know that. Oh, good. And if you don't, if you don't want to schedule a session or whatever, you could always support us through Patreon because, um, like I said, we put a lot of uh, we spend a lot of time putting a lot of free content together, and uh, we would love to have uh, people sponsoring us as well. Good. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I guess that's it for this evening. And. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you do you want right. me do you want me uh, unmute everybody or? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, I don't know. You know, whatever, <laughs> what whatever you uh, want to do, or else I could just close. Looks like people are leaving anyway. Okay. Well, um, let's see. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the for the wonderful comments, and thank you very very much for being here. I. Uh, so so appreciate every one of you uh love the asd love you guys love 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 you guys and um so much looking forward to seeing to seeing everybody at the well, i was tired or, of hearing or down in massachusetts or wherever i see you guys next okay so thank you so much